yourself because you can't always come back from where you go. Mike, okay? So when you start dancing with the devil, okay, which like Obama is and like uh, like many people do, uh, then he's the one who will put the scales on your eyes. You don't see what you're doing. That's why America's upside down. They've been dancing with the devil. And yeah, but it's worked for but it's worked for Mr. and Mrs. Obama. Here are two community organizers. Look how far they've gotten with it. Because well, they got the power of the dark side on them. You know, there's a there's a poker game going on. Like you said before, somebody starts a war and someone's going to finish it, or somebody starts something. Well, there's a poker game going on. There's a lot of people at the table. Well, as far as the new world order, the Chinese are going to be the ones who eventually win that hand. There may be Putin and there may be other people at that table that thinking they're going to win. And the ISIS or whatever, they're going to try and control the world with the World Wide Web. It's like a spider web where everyone's coming into the web system, and that's like a spider web. And you're going to get caught in it. All your information, all your... Uh, all it's interesting. No, I've been sucked into the Internet. I'm on it all the time. I'm on it all the time, but I try to use it for my work. I mean, I write my books from it. I produce my shows from it. How in the world can you live without being on the Internet? How is it even possible? Yeah, I mean, that's what the web is. I mean, it's amazing. That it's a worldwide web. It, it, yeah, but I love what you just said. It's the spider web, and once you're pulled into it, you can't get out of it. I like that. I think it's 100% true. But what if you yourself are a bigger spider than the spider that wove the web? Well, the only one bigger than that right now. Well, or what if you're a kind of what if you're a kind of being that can walk that web without getting stuck in it, and use that web for your own for your own, you know, let's say your own purposes. You know, not every insect that walks in a spider web gets attached to it. What you do, you you're walking that you're walking that web. I I, I have to pray to God that He keeps you uh, from being getting stuck or getting uh, wrapped up. Yeah, but there's everything on the web. Here's the point. There's everything on the Internet, from the worst horrible garbage imaginable to the most sublime things humanity has ever created. So this is the problem, is that it's, it's hard to stay on one side without being sucked into the other. I agree with you, right? Isn't that what you're saying? No, no I'm actually saying as far as the world, the world order, in other words, who said it, who, how that tool is going to be used to eventually... You know, well, of course. Okay, I get what you're saying. So you're taking out of the esoteric and putting into the practical. Well, yeah, I, you're right. So where do we go with it? We don't turn off on the web. I know people who are my age who don't have don't have internet, and they consider themselves intelligent. I know one guy who's a lawyer. He doesn't have any uh, no iPhone, no cell phone. He thinks he's superior because of that. How could he even function in the world like that? You can't really function without being there. I'm just saying it's there, and it's going to come. You know. It's, it's, it's going to come home, and there will be a time. All right, but you believe that the players right now are not the ultimate players, is what you're saying. You, you think that, for example, this game going on in Syria, although Russia looks like it's going to pound ISIS into sand, the big winner there is going to be China, is what you're, you're kind of saying? I'm saying that, right, that Russia is one of the players in the poker game. And so is the United States. But the United States is going to be destroyed in one hour. In one hour's time, the, 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 the great whore, which America is, I hate to say it because I love America, but they're going to be taken out in one hour. It will be one well, hour. You well, you're talking about China taking down our grid, using, using uh, pulses to destroy our grid? I'm talking about a combination of things. I think it's going to be China and Russia teaming up together, and then China, like Germany, with Russia, is going to take out Russia. Eventually, it's going to be those two together, but China, with their billions of people, with their men not having women, it's going to be like Attila the Hun, where he can come to, they can come to America, they can come to the world, they can get their women. I mean, there's a lot of dynamics involved, Mike, I think. I well, I look around America, it's the weakest nation on the planet. It is the most, I've never seen anything like it as I look at it. Everywhere I go, I see weakness. I see a pathetic nation, a nation that looks like it's ripe for the taking. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life, how a masculine nation like this that, that beat Hitler could be turned into pulp 
by such evil forces in such a small period of time, and I mean small historically. You know, you talk about a half a century to see a nation of this power ground into pulp by vermin. It's hard to believe. And it's from the enemy within. And now they have their, can their president in the White House for seven straight years doing everything he can to destroy whatever, whatever is left of the masculinity of this nation, to put it plain in plain English. Boy, you really know what you're doing. Before you go, what do you do for a living, my friend? Uh, I'm a teacher. History? No, a uh, technical teacher. Well, your students are very lucky, Bob. Stay on the line, Bob. We're going to send you one of the first first editions of Government Zero. Boy, do I get callers, right, Bob? That was amazing. There's food for thought. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Well, the hour is almost up, and that was hour two. There's another big hour of hour three, but uh, my God, uh, all I can say to you is what a Monday this has been. It started out dark, and, uh, you know, they say it's darkest before the dawn, and it really was dark before today's dawn, and I tweeted out, dark day looming. If you're on my Twitter list, I'm sorry if I bummed you out, but the day's young yet. We had a pilot die of a heart attack in midair in an American Airlines plane naked doctor dead in a doorway. I mean, a lot of bad stuff going on in the world. The worst is the president's lies about his fake war against ISIS, as evidenced by the real war being conducted by a real man with a real Air Force against a real enemy. My friends, it's never been this bad. But you can thank Jake Woodpecker and company for permitting him to get away with this. More when I return. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Goes back to uh, the 50s when we had a real American in the White House, a real American hero in the White House at that, someone who had actually fought in World War II, led us in the victory against Germany. It was an America in. Well, the greatest place it was ever in the history of its nationhood. And America was truly a great place to live in at that time. I realize it was imperfect as it is now, and it was corrected to a certain extent after that period of time. But we've reached the nadir of our nation's history under Barack Obama. He is the, the epitome, the opposite of that great time in American history. i got to tell you, I've lived through it. I'm living through it. I'm not just doing it for effect. Many people are so blind, they don't even know what's going on. And I'm going to try to do this generically without getting too personal. But I had a conversation with, a, let us say, an acquaintance of mine recently over something. Oh, he brought up the Pope. Now, he's a liberal, and I, I knew him from college. He's a nice guy, but he is politically just a, uh, let us say, a blind follower of liberalism. He can't evolve. No matter what happens in the world, he's stuck in the Democrat side of the ledger. So I'm not that friendly with him, but okay, you know, for old time's sake, he knew my mother and father and this and that. He knew me in my car days. You know, you hang out with people you knew once in a while. Nothing wrong with that, and you can disagree with people too, but something interesting happened on the phone. He said, I heard your show on the Pope, and he said, I really liked your passion, but I disagree with you. And he said, I got to run. I said, what do you mean you got to run? What, what do you know about the Pope's history? I said to him. He said, oh, I don't know. I got to run right now. I said, no, no, wait a minute. I studied this Pope. I know his history from the time he was a bartender, politician, to his history as a uh, Peronista, 
the radical politics of his youth. I wrote a 9,000-word chapter on it in my forthcoming book, Government Zero. I said, have you studied the Pope? No, no, he said, but I got to run. I said, hey, Johnny, look, you're an architect, and I wouldn't dispute architectural theory with you because I know nothing about it. How could you have the audacity to tell me that you don't agree with me, excuse me, on the Pope, but you never studied him? I said, the only reason I said you, an atheist who hates religion, hates the church in particular, love the Pope is because the Pope has given you a political message that you accept. Don't you understand that? And he didn't understand it. And I said, holy God, even intelligent people are so locked into their doxies, it's almost impossible. You talk about going against the tide, it's hard to believe how thick people can be. Their minds are made up, don't confuse them with the facts. You know that story, right? So that's what the, the problem is for us right now. And then you got intelligent people, and I meet intelligent people, only a few people I talk to. I don't have a wide circle of friends, and I have very few people I talk to at all, to be frank with you. It's not like I don't waste my time, but I don't waste my time. You know, Donald Trump said something interesting. I'm reading a book to try to smear him from when he was younger. It doesn't smear him. It looks like he's a great guy, frankly. I would have liked to have hang out with Donald when he was younger. But the thing was, this guy who wrote is a loser who can't stand Donald's success. So he tries to smear him on all the successes and tries to smear his father. It's awful what these, what these people will do. But there was one statement that stuck out in my head from when Donald was young where he said, he said something to the effect of, I don't give the ordinary person respect because they're not worth it. Most ordinary people are terrible people. It's absolutely true. Why should you respect everyone you meet? What, what they, you owe it to them? Most people are no good, by the way. They're not good. Most people are stupid, incidentally. No matter how smart they may look, they're dumb. And they're, they're stuck. They can't grow. They can't develop. Their minds are closed. So that's why you hang out with a dog or whatever, or watch seagulls die for prey. Or we'll watch cormorants drop out of the sky. I watch birds. I love to watch the uh, the terns here on San Francisco Bay drop out of the sky. It's amazing. You see them flying over the water, and then they let their wings go, and they literally drop like a rock and hit that fish. It's awesome to watch that. And here we are, the Savage Nation Hour 3 on this Monday. I don't even know the date. I've lost track of the date already. October something? Year what? 2015 already. 10-5-2015. I'm timeless. Dates are timeless to me. You know, I want to mention something. I have to get it off my out of my system. Because if I don't, who will? What, someone's going to tell you about it? The talk stream live streaming radio show ratings came out. And I got to tell you something interesting. Yes, I'm number one, but my ratings went through the ceiling. They were high, but now they broke all records. I have a 27 share. You know what that means? That means out of 100 share, I have almost I have 27 percent of a hundred share in other words anyone listening to talk radio at that time 27 percent of them are listening to me that's that's beyond comprehension Russia's number two at 13.9 percent and this is not to knock Russian anyway it's just what it is Laura Ingram's number three Glenn Beck five Sean Hannity six with a 3.6 share it's and other very good people are on the list I'm not here to knock anyone Alex Jones is at number 10 at a 1.5 share, and he's really good. Then there are others. Some are good, some are not, this and that. But the point I'm making is, yes, I'm blowing my own horn, but if I didn't, who would? What are you going to do? You're going you're gonna to read about me in the New York Daily News or the New York Daily the Post? You're going to see me on, on Fox News? No, they're my enemy. They don't like me. They don't want me on the network. And I know what it goes back to. I figured out when it happened. When I first started in radio, Hannity and uh, O'Reilly used to compete to get me on the show with my book. They wanted me on first, and it was an interesting time for me. And then I wrote The Political Zoo in the mid-2000s, where uh, I talked about O'Reilly with the loofah incident. I think that's what did it now that I think about it. It must have been the loofah cover-up by the Fox thing. He's got a great show. He does very good. And makes a lot of money. He knows just what uh, notes to, to toot. You know, killing this one, killing that one. I hope he doesn't write one called Killing O'Reilly. I don't know how that would work. He's killed everyone off. I mean, the next thing is the author might, might knock himself off in a book. That might be his biggest seller. <laughs> just joking. But I'm saying that's why I'm not on there. So the TSL Top 25, and he dropped out of radio years ago because he wasn't pulling. 
the TSL Top 25 streaming talk shows. I would be terrible on television. It's not my medium.